Hello everybody, my name is Kai. Welcome back to Warframe. Today, we will be taking a look at the ever-powerful Mirage, specifically Mirage Prime. She is one of the only Warframes to have like an S-tier helmet, that being Eclipse, and through the use of practically just her first and her third ability, is an absolute damage monster. When you pair it up with other abilities that allow her to survive a little bit better, and also increase her killing potential, you get a crazy frame. Let's go hop into the sim, and I can show you why. And here we are in the simulacrum. Let's do what we always do and go over Mirage's abilities and the helmet ability that we are using on this build. Mirage's first ability is Hall of Mirrors. When you cast Hall of Mirrors, you will get clones that sit around you. They are kind of transparent just so that they don't get in the way of your view. But these clones mimic your actions. Now, they deal at base 20% of your current weapon's total damage that does scale off of strength. They're time that they stay with you is also scaled off duration and the number of holograms is capped at four when firing any hit scan or non-hit scan primary or secondary weapon only the front two holograms will shoot with you but if you melee for example if i throw my glaive prime here you will see that i throw five in total because all units melee with you and they all return the holograms also use whatever weapon you have equipped, primary or secondary, and the stats of those guns depend on the modded stats of your own weapon. Like I said before, the holograms are invulnerable and cannot take damage, draw enemy attention, but they're also intangible, so they can get stuck inside terrain and will actually hit the terrain walls. As you can see, the plasma shot coming from that hologram is not going through. If I walk forward, you will see that it appears there. So try to stay away from walls when you have Hall of Mirrors up if you want the maximum damage bonus. Said damage bonus is about 80% because of how the damage redistributes between all of your holograms. Just to display again that all holograms copy your melee attacks. So with this Skiajati right here, all of them are using this melee and all of them will copy your movement exactly. The second ability on this build is Shooting Gallery. This is a Mace's Helmet ability. We use this for a multitude of reasons. One, it buffs our Hall of Mirrors damage and our own damage. It also, when using the Muzzle Flash Augment, allows us to have a really, really nice synergy with our Hall of Mirrors. The Muzzle Flash Augment states that after six assists by a player with Shooting Gallery, Mace's next shot, obviously replace Mesa with whatever frame you're using this ability on, will blind enemies within 12 meters for 6 seconds. That 12 meter radius scales with range, and the duration scales off that 6 seconds. If you are unaware, Shooting Gallery does a lot of things for one ability, one of those being jamming enemy weapons. When I use Shooting Gallery on these Corrupted Heavy Gunners, you will see that they start to check their weapons because they are jammed. And this is a temporary stun that can reproc on these enemies. The other part of Shooting Gallery is a damage bonus that rotates between teammates. Besides granting at base a 25% flat additive damage bonus to yourself it gives a rotating buff between you and all your teammates up to three obviously because you can only play with four player squads this buff will rotate between them and randomly give them in an order until it comes back to you to just rotate through them again normally this ability besides the damage and the jamming part requires a team to be able to function to its fullest abilities or allies Hall of Mirrors and the clones or specters that it spawns do count as allies, which means that Shooting Gallery can affect them. Now, the augment states that after six player assists with Shooting Gallery, Mace's next shot will blind enemies for 12 seconds. With Hall of Mirrors counting as player assists and all of them mimicking our own actions, using a big big hitbox type weapons such as the tenet plasmor means that any one of our four or two only in this case when you're using a primary or secondary not a melee will get an assist which allows us to proc the radial blind from muzzle flash this essentially makes mirage into a uh, you know you just kind of walk around anywhere you shoot things and you will self proc a 31 meter blind every couple of seconds it's insane if I demonstrate on these heavy gunners, when I get my Hall of Mirrors in here, then activate my shooting gallery, takes a minute to stack up, you'll see in the top right, I have that 66% near the shooting gallery icon. I kill one more or two more enemies, now it's at 100%, my next shot will pulse, and all of these enemies will be blinded. And I did this 100% by myself. You can also make it really easy, do it with the Glade Prime, which will kill all those enemies, and because your your other specters throw a glaive too, which with the volatile quick return mod will explode, even though they cannot manually detonate the heavy attack version, 
allows you to really easily get those player assists when you explode it and allow your next shot to full blind. Moving on from the clearly amazing, amazing, amazing synergy between Hall of Mirrors and Shooting Gallery, we have Eclipse, which is her damage buff ability and her helmet ability. Eclipse gives you either damage increase or damage reduction. The damage reduction cannot exceed 95% under any circumstances, and the damage increase skills off strength to potentially go as high as you can get it. This next interaction is a little buggy. When you cast Eclipse, you'll see that right here, I'm in the light. So I'm getting a 200% damage bonus. But if I move into somewhere that might be considered darker, here you go. I am now getting that 75% damage resist. What buff you get depends on where you are. And it is honestly really annoying because the intensity of the light can also increase the amount of buff you get. Which means that there are certain settings you can run to make this better, although I feel like that is too much min-maxing for just one frame, so go Google that if you'd like on your own. The main thing that you really want from this ability, though, is the damage increase because you're going to be moving around a lot with Mirage and not sitting in a corner, even though 95% DR is pretty good. The damage increase is a multiplicative bonus. Now, this is different from other abilities such as Roar, which allow you to double dip on a lot of statuses. This is just a huge damage increase to your weapon that scales off strength. Normally, your Hall of Mirrors do not gain the bonus damage from Eclipse, but with the total Eclipse Augment mod, they will. If I use an unmodded Tenet Plasmor, you will see that I hit for about 59 impact procs, and then if I use Eclipse, I'm getting that damage increase now because I'm in light, I hit for a lot more. Some final notes about it are that companions are not affected by Eclipse, cannot increase their damage with it at all. You can also recast it while it is active to refresh the duration, which is nice to have to never run out of it. And Exalted weapons are affected by Eclipse like any other weapon, although obviously Mirage does not have her own Exalted. That is only because Eclipse is her helmet ability, so you can put it on other frames. But it should be known that on the frames Chroma, Octavia, Rhino, and Zaku, you can only replace their damage increasing abilities with Eclipse, so you cannot have two damage stacking abilities on one frame. And if we're getting really technical, the bonuses that Eclipse gives are actually capped to 150% at base, and the DR is capped at 75, but this is a Mirage build. So let's move on to her fourth ability. Prism is... Honestly, not an ability that we're really going to be using in this build because it doesn't do anything for us that we actually need. It has a couple of cool interactions with the muzzle flash augment, but we can already proc those ourselves, but I might as well show it to you. When you cast prism, you will do an admittedly very, very long animation and throw this prism into the air. Now these prisms, as you can see, shoots out about 20 lasers that auto target enemies and they do a lot of damage. Now these, this does have a range, but, you know, a bit of a um, confusing ability. Now, it will bounce off of geometry on the map, so its kind of direction is based on where you throw it yourself. It is also a channeled ability, which means that it is draining while it is active at 10 energy a second at base. It gains plus 100% damage per enemy hit that is affected by the lighting, because of course it is, and it also does deal radiation damage at about 3 ticks of damage per second. And then if I can show it to you here before it kills this poor corrupted heavy gunner, it does do a blinding flash when deactivated. There you go. That does scale off range and duration, just like the rest of the ability. As you clearly saw there, this does a lot of damage. Like, it really does. Other than it having a long casting time, like, there are some benefits to it. It's just it does what the rest of Mirage's kit does, but there's no, like, reason to really use this. Obviously, you need to let its damage scale up a little bit, and it just went outside the map. But... We don't really use this ability because of, again, the long cast time, the fact that it doesn't really do anything. The only nicety that I could find with it is that when you do have your shooting gallery proc and you use Prism, if you look in the top right, you will see that it actually can proc Muzzle Flash for us because it is, for some reason, counted as an ally that can be affected by shooting gallery. So, you know, if I shoot right here, I will blind this heavy gunner. But again, we're already doing that with our Hall of Mirrors synergy, so no real reason for this. The only reason we don't subsume over this ability is because her 2 is less useful in this build, and this has some niche use cases to really nuke a room, but you're already really doing that yourself, so I don't see a reason to outsource it to an ability that takes forever to use and is very, very energy hungry. It has some good builds with its augment, but we're not using that here, so not really specking into it much. It's just lucky that the stats that this thing wants are what the rest of her abilities want, so I guess use it if you want. Honestly, it's not a negative or a positive. You won't see me using it that often, though.
But that is the Mirage build, everybody. So let's look at the actual mods we use to achieve this. Starting off with our aura, Corrosive Projection is used because there's no armor strip in any of her abilities. While she can do some insane damage, she does struggle with armor as you get into those higher tiers without other ways to get past it. So I like to use Corrosive Projection to just give us a little bit of an easier time against it. Our Arcanes here are Arcane Energize. This is pure comfort. We are running decent duration, so you won't be recasting these abilities a lot, and you could replace this with something else, but I like to use this because if you bottom out on energy, it is really difficult to get it back. Malt Augmented is used because Eclipse, Hall of Mirrors, and Shooting Gallery, I guess Prism 2, like strength, but we are negative strength here. Malt Augmented here brings us back up to 155, and that's perfectly fine for all of these abilities. Obviously, if you want a huge, huge, huge damage buff, you go with much higher strength values for Eclipse and your Hall of Mirrors, but you're already doing so much damage that for the first couple of hours of Steel Path, this build will shine. I do want to reiterate that again though. This is not a shield gating build. We are not actively using the damage reduction of Eclipse. This is a first couple hours of Steel Path absolutely demolished because of the pure radio blind that we get off of Shooting Gallery. Enemies aren't really shooting at you, plus Mirage's passive makes all parkour maneuvers 50% faster, so you're really moving around getting that blind on enemies. This means that it's really hard for you to get hit, but besides that, you can die. Personally, in the hour that I've used this, I have not struggled with it at all. I have not taken it to level cap. I have not taken it to 3 hours in the steel path. But you can take my word for it that if you just want to do 1 to 2 to 3 or whatever hours in the steel path, this will do you really well. Rolling Guard is here for that status cleanse in case we get hit by one of those Eximus units. Obviously, we're using Muzzle Flash. This is what the entire build is made around. We have almost max range. I just am not using the Exilus because I'm not a Mirage main. But this is so that we get the maximum radius on our shooting gallery to stun and the maximum blind rage on our um, Muzzle Flash. This just means that practically every enemy around you is CC, which allows you to kill them really easily because they're all standing there messing with their guns or they're blinded. Transient Fortitude is where we get our strength because we're using overextended. It kind of nukes it down to 40%. This just gives us that gives us that 55 and then stacking with multi augmented to give us 155 in total. Constitution, Prime Continuity are here because we do want a decent amount of duration. This is 100 efficiency build, so we don't want to have to be recasting these abilities a lot especially since you can't recast Hall of Mirrors and Shooting Gallery while they're already active. And besides that, I think this is a really, really simple and achievable build, but a very, very strong one. When using Mirage, I like to use weapons that have a massive AoE hitbox. Not AoE fire on the end, but a huge hitbox like the Nadaruk and especially the Tenet Archiplasmor. This is because the Hall of Mirrors and your own plasma bullets, they will kind of connect. This is also what makes it so easy to proc Muzzle Flash because any target that you shoot at, your mirrors will shoot at, which gets them an assist and just allows you to really bump up that damage. Obviously, you can use single target weapons. Mirage is a really great single target buffer since she kind of makes single target weapons not single target, but the Plasmor is just absolutely disgusting on her. Right here, you'll see that I'm using a combo of an Epitaph Primer for pure viral and a Glaive Prime, which is built for the Heavy Attack, obviously, which has that Force Slash. This has a couple of interesting synergies with this build, because all of our Hall of Mirrors throw a Glaive. But, as you will see here, when I detonate the Heavy Attack with my Hall of Mirrors, they do not. Which is unfortunate. But, how we can get around this is with the Volatile Quick Return mod, which gives you 100% chance to explode, on bounce. Now, if you want to look at this Glaive build, I recommend you just go watch my Glaive Prime video on my channel. But besides that, we're just using a Smite mod for even more damage on our Slash procs against these corrupted enemies. And then we're outsourcing our Viral Priming from our Epitaph since we cannot fit it on the Glaive Prime build. If I gather myself the full suite of buffs before we attack these enemies with this combo, which would be Hall of Mirrors, Shooting Gallery, and Eclipse, which are all damage buffs, and then I come and I, I'm going to just group these enemies for simplicity's sake. I don't know why they do that, but we're just going to prime them all with some viral. And leave. Yeah. Now, like I said before, the Hall of Mirrors holograms do not detonate the heavy attack, but they still get the explosion at the end from Volatile Quick Return. And that does help with your damage because it spreads status. And more status effects are great. 
talking about synergies that I like with shooting gallery and muzzle flash, go watch my recent Necros video because that video showcases an absolutely brilliant one between shooting gallery and his shadows of the dead. Now for focus schools on this build, you can use Matarai for more strength, for more damage, casting speed too, and just, you know, void strike and all those crazy things you can do with it to kill acolytes. You can also use Unairu and it's poise, pose, whatever trait that gives you immunity to slow stagger and knockdown effects for at max rank 40 seconds. This is great because it just means that you won't be knocking yourself down when priming enemies with the epitaph. Although, because of Mirage's passive, sliding lasts 85% longer and acrobatic maneuvers are 50% faster, if you couldn't notice, whenever I bullet jump, I do it a lot quicker. This just means that you really should be like in the air and maneuvering around a lot and, you know, not really like staying near what you're hitting with your epitaph to prime and then just chucking your glaive at it to kill them all. But I think this is a build best showcased in the steel path, so I will see you there. Before I forget, like I always do actually, because I always say that and then forget I have a companion on, we'll load in and then be like, I gotta leave and put a companion on, use a Panzer Volpophila. It doesn't die, it also spreads viral, which is fantastic for your glaive prime and it's flash because that's where you get the most of your damage paired with the Bane mod. So, I'll actually see you there now. Alright, here we are in Mott, in the Void on the Steel Path. Just going to get the rotation started, get all our abilities procced. For simplicity's sake, I will just kill a bunch of enemies with the Glaive real quick. And you will notice that actually, when we just get ready to throw our Glaive, we proc the blind. So we don't even need to use our weapons. We just run around and blind everything. And it's a 30 meter radius, so it's like... Oh no, our shield's broke. Oh wait, nothing can see anymore. Not even a big deal. And if our shields do break and we're in threat of dying, just roll. Oh, our shield's broke. Not a big deal. Jesse, you won't have any struggles with this build. Nothing can see when you're using it. And if we, you know, use our actual weapon, it's just you proc so many lines all the time. Just gotta make sure you actually have shooting gallery up like an idiot. But I am. Makes it really easy to just nuke rooms. Yeah, that the, the blind proccing on you just getting ready to throw the glaive is honestly something that I really, really like. I mean I just killed a huge group of enemies, but you know. I can only imagine what it's like using this augment with Mesa and being able to use a grouping ability so that you can just kill a bunch of enemies in a single throw of something. Specifically the Glaive Prime, because the Glaive Prime is a Glaive Prime. I mean, I'm not even using my Epitaph here because you don't need it. The Slash Prox will just one hit anyways. Oh, let's refresh our abilities and... But if I, you know, if I want to group with Megas Anomaly... Not that I need to, I mean that 1 million damage proc right there. The slash procs already are pretty much one hitting because of being the throw up and giving us that double dip. And you know what? Since this is a build that's featuring the Glaive Prime a lot, you will know that it fares exceptionally well against Acolytes. I was planning on actually waiting for an Acolyte to spawn, but just decided to mention because I didn't want to forget. I'm pretty sure that this radial blind that you get goes through walls. And right now you can see we're at a 291%, almost close to 300% damage buff on our um, weapons from Eclipse. If I reproc, now it's at 303, and we're not at maximal augmented, nowhere even close. We're actually pretty close in like 10. But you understand what I'm saying. Having Eclipse on Mirage is literally like having weapon arcanes, but for melees, which is why the Glaive Prime is killing so quickly right now. And you know, it just helps that we've got that blind and everything. If I decide to just throw one of these up for whatever reason, it takes a minute, but it will kill. And no, oh, I was at the right of dying right there because I lost my shields. Not really, actually. The, the Prism actually does have a little more use than I originally thought, because you can throw it, and then now, pretty much every time that I get ready to throw my Glaive, because it's just killing things, I get that blind proc. Literally, nothing can see. We have, like, a 400% damage increase from all of our abilities, because, what, we're having 310 from Eclipse fully stacked up, which is pretty much a weapon arcane on a melee weapon with Glaive Prime. We have another, like, 80% from Shooting Gallery, and we've got another 80, so like what, 600% almost? A little crazy. Throwing one of these is actually not bad because it kills things, which gives me that blind. 
on demand without even needing to kill things. And it just works out, man. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic combination. I'm actually sure that Vor will die really, really quickly here. Alright, here Vor is. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna do this and hope that, like, oh, I hit it. I hit with the status effect. Not a big deal. Let me just toss one of these to, like, CC a little bit more and help get that, those blind procs. Consistent blinds and, oh, violent spawned? That's actually probably one of the only big threats to this Mirage. But you just keep jumping around and your Glade Prime will kill him. And you didn't, you know, get all your abilities back up. That is a lot of people. Let's prime them all and one shot them. Prime them all, one shot them. If you prime with the viral stacks, literally only takes a couple shots. You will one shot literally anything up until some ridiculous enemy levels. Alright, I think y'all have seen enough to know that I'm not bullshitting you. That's gonna be it for the video, everybody. You, you guys already know how it is. Like, I find a synergy like this and I'm like, yo, I gotta make this known because I've been using the muzzle flash augment a lot lately and like being able to self proc it is just so strong. And the fact that the blind like moves with you and not off like the six enemy assist kill or whatever, it's just really, really good. Obviously then pairing that with Mirage's insane damage because the only thing that she needs to survive really well in my opinion is survivability because she can kill things super fast but when you pair it with a really easy way to survive because nothing is shooting you when you have shooting gallery up paired with everything in a 30 meter radius being blinded every five seconds it's really strong obviously i know the glaive and the epitaph are like really good by themselves but pairing it with mirage's insane damage buffs you just get even more i didn't even really use the archiplasma in this video that much because i was using the glaive prime and i was like damn this thing is like really good so go check out my glaive prime video if you haven't already i would really appreciate it but besides that i just want to say thank you again everybody the support on all my videos means a hell of a lot to me and you know even though i've had some issues with monetization lately and my google account being kind of like demonetized as a whole for about a month um that's a whole other topic i might make a community post besides that again thank you so much for watching i appreciate every single one of you and hope that you enjoyed this one i will see you later peace